Welcome everyone to Five Points Art Gallery Studio. Welcome back if you've been here before. And, um, thank you for coming if this is your first time. This is um, the gallery's 14th and 15th, I believe, exhibition within its two years, or approaching two years of operation. The gallery's uh, two year anniversary is officially on November 17th. I'm happy to still be here. We mm -hmm. will be here. So uh, we're investing in development in my childhood neighborhood. So I'm glad to be back and happy to contribute um, work that I not only produce, but works by other talented individuals. For um, within a community that's usually underrepresented and not really seen in areas like this, um, the gallery is having a two year anniversary dinner on November, or Friday, November 20th. Those are ticketed. Um, seats are capped at two people, forty dollars each is a full dinner with a discussion and um, a documentary on the full scope of the project as it is officially completed as of July. And then um, there will be a free party, small party with a live performance by the Dope Music Crew on the Milwaukee Day um, Performance Group. Um, following that dinner, and that will go on from eight to ten p.m. And so that's open to the public, but it'd be capped because of COVID. But I want to introduce two phenomenal artists that I've known one for quite a while, one um, for at least a year. And we've had discussions about both of their exhibitions for at least that long of time, for at least a time. So um, one artist is a Milwaukee based artist, Amar Isaguma. We are currently in the space. With his exhibited works, his um, exhibition is called The Black and Downy Alchemy and the Soul Mama. We'll get into the discussion behind the title of his works shortly. And then another artist um, I met a year ago, he was exhibiting in Madison, Wisconsin. And I met him through another mutual art friend, Brad Anthony Bernard, who's also a talented Milwaukee based artist as well. Vita Shell's exhibition is called Birds Fly South. We will now um, get into the concept behind his exhibition, his uh, aesthetic, and his background. So welcome, Bobby. He's coming from Monroe, Indiana. So we're excited he can make it here, especially during these uh, COVID times. Uh, we appreciate him uh, gracing us with his presence and um, giving us the interactivity that the, the gallery is geared and focus on providing real life experience, real conversation, and putting personality and vitality behind the words, not just the products themselves. So welcome, Biden. And hey, Omar. Cool. 
So first, we can, um, if this is your first time, this is very interactive. We want this to be comfortable and warm. And so if you have questions, comments, or whatever, just jump in, ask the artist, interrupt, um, and make it as um, conversational as possible. Um, this is not a lecture, so you don't have to listen until the end and wait to ask questions. Jump in if you want to interject anything. Um, but I will help um, have a talk, help have guide the discussion, I'm sorry, with the artist and with the audience. And so we'll start by asking first Vida about your title, Birds Fly South. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, well, um, hi everybody. Um, outside of just being here, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot going on in Louisiana and it has been for the last 12 months. Um, we've had a few months come through uh, on top of COVID. We had a in my city. Um, so um, my work is always about like being uh, from the South, um, uh, being influenced by hip hop, um, being influenced by um, a lot of, uh, I guess, microaggressions, things that that not we don't necessarily think about daily. Uh, so my work is always based on like these things uh, that influence us to be where we are today, even when, especially when it comes to like hip hop music. So my work is, my titles are always going to be um, grounded in that real gritty uh, Southern um, the pop uh, type of thing. The birds, birds fly south uh, has, you know, all kinds of meanings to it. Uh, of course, you hear it in a lot of the rap songs and it's usually uh, sometimes it's cold, street cold um, for uh, drug talk in the, in the community. Um, um, fly south and a metaphor for um, is, is that is that right? Hi. Okay. Uh, people from you know coming back south, the whole coming back home uh, idea, uh, coming back south because most people that live in the north, families are from the south, or you know in that sense. So um, that was what kind of like what I'm thinking about with the work, um, with the title, just to, this whole. Um, several meanings, things that you can kind of um, find your your meaning in in the uh, name of it or whatever. So that's what that's what I'm always thinking about with my work in uh, in a sense. So. Okay, Amar, your title: The Black Madonna Alchemy Soul with a K and the and the Soul Mama and the Mystic Soul Mama. I'm sorry. Can you tell us? The, the intention behind that title? Well, I spell uh, alchemy with the K because of um, the, the name of the of ancient Egypt, you know, the, one of the names they used was Kenya. And um, when studying alchemy, I found that one of the sources for the, the word alchemy is from the word Kim, from Kenya. And um, Kenya means the black man. So um, alchemy is taken like a black source, and um, they call it the the primal material. And in that source, they try to create um, gold. So um, when I, I was studying alchemy, I, I kept finding these references to the the black Madonna. And um, so I thought it was, it was very interesting because we're often told about the, well, some of us know about the hundreds of, probably thousands of Black Madonnas in, in Europe. Um, and, but we're, we're told things like, oh, the, the candles in front of the, the pieces turn the skin black or, or whatever, you know, all these different excuses. But, you know, I found out they were actually black for a reason. And it's, a whole history behind it, and and it began in um, with ancient Egypt. So that's that's what the the K reference is. So, so do you feel like your title is uh, transposing what is what is considered common knowledge about what the Madonna is? 
I don't think there's very like common knowledge about like that because you know, like usually um, um, most most of the, the things you when you when you look at the sub subject most of it's is hidden knowledge unless you come up, up across some esoteric stuff you know and um, so I try to expose some of the things I learned when I when studying um, the Black Madonna and. Um, and I, I try to put them in these pieces. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, um, both of you can answer, but do you feel like you are both representing what might be considered a subculture in America? Mm -hmm. I don't know for um, my work dealing with, I don't know, hip hop and you know, I think it's kind of like a high topic right now for this, this kind of stuff that um, that's in my work. Um, and a lot of my work has always been about, um, like I said, like these things that exist around us um, that we, we normally don't pay attention to. So, um, and when I first started making this work, it was kind of like a lot of protesting and um, things that are going on now wasn't happening. And it was kind of like me questioning like what, what happened to the people that were out, you know, making noise. Um, so my work is kind of like came full circle. Um, and, and the work that I continue to do is I continue to kind of like use like common regular everyday people um, and trying to give them voice, give them um, um, you know, kind of uh, do something counterculture to the stereotypes that we normally see for for the, for our group of people. So I think I think it's kind of like full circle. I think that's kind of like uh, a part of the conversation that a lot of people are having now. Like a lot of the um, uh, producers that's making movies, they're trying to make movies that really speak um, outside of the stereotypes um, that that exist for um, black folks. So. I think my work is a part of just that whole um, conversation. Um, I think what I do, I try to, I don't know, I just try to go into spaces and um, because I'm, I'm usually showing in museums and all the spaces like that. Um, I, I try to, you know, make sure just normal people, normal looking people can be in those spaces and be seen as, um, some greater than you know than what we want to see in the news or whatever. So that's my that's what my work is kind of doing, like and into that conversation of that long conversation of portraits, portraiture and all of that. And really trying to, you know, insert more just regular everyday black people. Yeah. Same, same question. You want to revise? <laughs> Do you feel like you are, you are oh, or is it a uh, transcendent um, the erasure, I guess, that might occur with topics of Black identity? Uh, I feel like my work, um, what I've been dealing with mostly like our erasure, like the, the uh, deities of the, the um, pantheon of the Europe people, but um, mostly Nigeria. And um, and the Madonnas, the Black Madonnas are an extension of that. And what I try to do with that work, I try to um, tell stories about um, our image as divine. You know, we see ourselves in a divine depiction and, and what that can do um, for us. And you know, not just like um, something outside ourselves, but but we as as um, divine. I mean, imagine what it is for to know that um, an African woman is like the source of all the spirituality, and and but it's hidden, you know. But um, and if, if we knew, like all the I mean, I'm trying to, I can just tell them. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff I learned about. So uh, I just think it's important, 
you know, like that, that we know um, that we we see ourselves as divine, and that um, and like blackness is also a big part of the, the spiritual avenue of this whole thing. So she's like she's black for a reason, and and she's like the source. They they make when you see the black Madonnas in Europe or anywhere, she's like the the source of like spiritual development. So like there's two things with alchemy. It's the, the chemical alchemy where you're taking base metals like lead and mercury and you're trying to produce gold, but it's also the, the spiritual alchemy where you're taking um, um, your, your, your human self and you're trying to develop yourself spiritually you know, to your, your greatest potential. So um, the Black Madonna, she represents like the source, the beginning, like the, the, like the rich, like the rich blackness of the soil and, and fertileness and, and um, you know, the soil that was created by the undination of the Nile, you know, the Nile River feeding the, the land and Kemet, and ancient Kemet. And, and um, so she's like the source of, of everything, almost like the, of the universe, you know, that's what, that's what she represents. And then that, that child is the, um, the potential, you know, the future potential coming from the source. So it's like, it's like so much, and it's like related, and I, I see it I'm moving throughout different things. So I try to like just grasp like a little bit of it, put it in, in the show. And I try to make it a little bit explainable, but it's, it's like beyond my reach. <laughs> Because that's what that's what a lot of art. It's it's not it's not always words to express like what the artist is thinking. So a lot of times, even these things are kind of like kind of hard for the artist because the artist is trying to explain something that's not explainable. It's the 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 visual part is the language, you know, uh, and it's it's you know this is just. You know, for y'all more. Than for <laughs> well, let's go into the visual language. Let's go into your stuff. Yeah. You got a question? Yeah. I, was, I was going to ask a question for Lamar, but I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. My question was about the mother suit. Since y'all was going into the visual, I figured I could ask, ask a question. All the other pieces, the babies are being held, or, in the, but in this one, the baby is floating up. Could you explain that? So the option. So, the mother, so that, that that started with um so that, this is the um the artist Kamika Martin Kamika Patton Martin Patton, I'm sorry um she um she had the last show here on that side of the there and um, she had a picture in one of her pieces and I um you know we did the question and asked her and asked her you know was she um, a believer in the mothership. Is that a mothership? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's a whole culture around mothership and, and um, Black people, African culture. And it, I think it's like the beginning of um, um, Afro. Afro futurism. Yeah, Afro futurism. So, um, so she wanted to be used in one of the pieces. And I, I connected, you know, our conversation about the mothership. And um, so the black Madonna, the black Madonna relates to the um, it, it belongs how, how, it, how it relates to the mothership. So, um, but I thought it would be a fly piece to um, to bring together, <laughs> you know, her the mothership connection, the the baby floating up, like you know, with the, the rays picking it up. So I. I, I some of the stuff, a lot of some of the stuff is um like trans um dimensional and um tele teleportation and it's, it's a lot of stuff um that goes into the um the Black Madonna mythology and culture. That's the um the piece here, the Basica Pasai, the, the the two interlocking circles, you know. It's, it's part of sacred geometry. It has a lot of meanings. You know, it was used throughout um, Christianity, and you know, it became the, the fish symbol. They took it apart, 
again, the fish symbol, but it's also, it represents um, like a, a portal, like a trans dimensional portal. And um, I have that as part of the title. And like, for example, you know, that shape is the womb. And, and womb is a, a trans dimensional portal, it, you know, through which light comes and, um, you know, enters the world. But, but beyond that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you are technically like master portraiture artists. And Amar talked about how he referenced an uh, artist who her exhibition just came down on Sunday, and I wrote up two more, Kamika Patton Martian. And she was the, the reference point for that specific piece or person. The people you um, that are your subject in the work, are they people you know? Do they, are they a figment of your imagination? Are they a combination? Um, uh, so what I, what I do is um, I usually do like a call for models. So, and I usually do it through my, um, through, through social media. Uh, so some of the people I know, some of the people I don't know, but I try um, during the, the, the um, photo shoots, when the models come out, I try to get to know them then. I really ask a lot of questions, you know, uh, try to make them, you know, loosen up um, and things like that. So like, um, that's kind of how I get the models to come out. And um, and then from there, like, um, what was the question? Are there, are there, <laughs> are there, are there people, are the subjects, your models, yeah. are they people you know? No, I don't, yeah, some, some of the people I know, some people I know. But they look familiar, like, yeah. this person looks like somebody I know, right. and I know they're likely somebody in Louisiana, and I don't right. know, I had an aunt who passed many years ago, right. a great aunt who lived in Louisiana, otherwise, right. I have no ties there, but the people look like people we know. Right. And so I'm wondering how. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a part of it. It's about making, you know, paying pay people, just common people. It's not these um, uh, exotic or, you know, um, people, some imaginary type of person. Mm -hmm. It's just regular people. And I think that's a part of, that's the power of the images that I paint is that they do look like somebody you know, um, because, you know, we all, they say all black folks look like black <laughs> So, you know, that it is a thing that, you know, these people look like somebody that you know. Um, so, yeah, that's the- Is that how you make the work relatable to? Is that, yeah, I, that yeah. part of that hip hop culture and just being well, rooted? You know, well, I think about my mom, right? I think about my mom, I think about my cousin, my cousin Pookie, <laughs> right? I think about, I think, yeah, Pookie. I love her. Everybody got two. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Oh, you know, New Jersey. But, um, <laughs> but I think about those people coming to my show, and I want my mom, I want my dad, I want my cousin, I want them to be able to enter the work some kind of way. And the figure is the easiest way. Everybody can identify with the figure. They find something in it. Even if it's negative, they still find something in the figure. So. I like using the figure as part of my work. Um, so so anybody can kind of, you know, enter the work in some kind of way. And then I like to um, play around with like the whole history of um, like low and high art. And that's like being able to make work that, um, that academia can kind of like talk to and talk about and cipher through. So I try to play around with both um, so the, it could, it could making be making it accessible but yeah, still academic, so right. it reaches the right. you know, whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. The strata. Do your interactions with your subjects inform like the collages you put behind them, or the impressions you put so them my them collages or you like little like uh, references that is like your inside story to that person? No, no, my collages is more like uh, I remember watching this interview with Ludacris, and he he's talking about driving around Atlanta and how just driving around Atlanta influenced the song. So I feel like with, with the work that I do, like I do a lot of collecting. Um, I collect um, magazines, I collect um, books, I collect um, uh, all kinds of stuff. So when I'm driving, like I might pull over and I'm usually, 
Like if I wasn't teaching this semester, I probably drove up here uh, from Louisiana. I think it's 14 hours or something. Mm -hmm. That's not too bad, you know, just put it up. But um, so I would find places to like go in and kind of like shop. And I think all of that collecting becomes a part of like my bigger conversation. It's like your story, then. It's yeah, it's well, yeah. So the people, the figures are more uh, uh, a part of me. Uh, the, the, the the things that yeah, yeah. So um, I think that's what the that's what the, the collages become. This bigger conversation of what I'm having with myself, um, me uh, thinking about advertisement, uh, the history of advertisement. I'm a graphic designer. Uh, a lot of the ways I create work is also in the same way as a graphic designer because sometimes um, none of the work in here, but most of the work I do, I paint on paper and then I move it around. I do my collages the same way I would in Photoshop. And even with the text and stuff that I put on, which I have one, uh, the couple pieces that are on the wall with the silk screen. Those are all, you know, things you can do in Photoshop. So I feel like it's a extension of what I do and all of these things kind of reference to my, you know, what I'm thinking about. Um, so, yeah. So if you use models, how do you, what, what informs your decision about their posturing? Well, a, lot, a lot of the posturing is left justified and then they're off center or they're looking a certain way. What 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 influences your decision about how you want them to pose? I don't know. I, I don't I don't I think when I look at my um when I'm looking at photos, it's kind of like it's more the, the charisma of this the those unspoken type of things that kind of come out um in the in the um the photos that that make me like rap that pulled me to those like the I can see character more the character that uh, of of the of, of the uh, model or whatever and those are the things that kind of like pulled me to uh, the picture work because I take like maybe 25, 50 uh, photographs of each of the models and I might use a couple of those so it's just really like when I see more character of that person in the in the uh, photograph that make me. They, uh, this one will work. I like this. Amar, do you what influences um, the representation of the people in your work? And we see, especially in this show, that we're highlighting a lot of natural nudity, the breath, which is a source of nourishment and food. I also, but, I also love the breath. <laughs> 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 Are your model these models? What, what are your references? Are these uh, people naked? Are your sources well, naked? Um, well, uh, some I make up. Most, most of these are, are all made up, except for um, Tamika. And um, so, like all of these, I, I just, you know, I just did them off the, you know, drew them and then carved them off and stuff. But, you know, I just made them up. But I just, um, and, no, I just make mostly I just make stuff. <laughs> so um, unless you know, with the, with my research, I I do use models, you know. But um, these are all, all of these except for one. So do you? And I guess this question for both of you. You say you love the breath, and they're very heavily accentuated and unabashedly so. But that's what the that's what the um diamonds are all about. You know, it's like you said, it's nurturing. You know, you're taking this, you know, this child, you know, essentially, you're taking a child and, you, and you're trying to make this child a crazy. You know, crazy is a title, right? But for the for the child to become a Christ, the mother has to be a Christ, really. You know what I mean? And, and Christ is just a title, it's not a, it's not a person's name. You know, so the, the mother had to um, go through all that before to prepare to to create something. You know, the the, the Christ child didn't just come out. You know, and part of that, you know, is is the mother living, you know, a good life. And, and what's better than the breast? When you keep <laughs> living a good life, you try to uh, you know nourish your child. And stuff. <laughs> 
mean, that's what you, you see a lot of, of the uh, Madonnas, you see them breastfeeding. And it, you know, it started, it started with, um, that's why I have this, this big piece here, because uh, a lot of the original image, they, they're rooted in the, the ancient Kemet. Um, with, you know, people, most people say Isis, you know, but we use the, we can use the ancient Kemetic name, Aset. You know, Isis is the, the Greek name for, for the deity. You know, but in the African language, she's, she's called Aset. So, um, so much of the the Madonna pieces, black or white, they're, they're rooted in the, the ancient image of Aset, with nursing um, baby Peru, or you know, you can say Horus. Starts this. So that's why I need a, a big piece kind of to show the story. And, and if you look at the, um, the Madonna pieces, you know, they look exactly like the ancient um, pieces of Abbasa and, and maybe Peru. So you have um, some reliefs that you carved on a styrofoam, and they kind of almost look like ancient tablet carving. With these Madonnas, do you want to talk about that process? Um, so all these pieces, I, um, they have Latin names. And I, I tell you that you like um, Latin phrases um, from alchemy. And um, so I, yeah, I did them, um, I, uh, I did a little relief to, um, to kind of, I don't know, give them an ancient kind of feel, I guess. Like you know, like the icons, the, the Christian icons and stuff. So um you said the process, talk about the process. If you would like. Okay, so I um first I came up with the titles, you know, I, I um different Latin terms, you know, like the um uh, the sacred facade or the um Amina Mundi, the the world soul, you know. Um and then I, I I came up with images for each title, and then um, I, I drew the image on a styrofoam. Like this, this is all I got. I got the styrofoam out the trash, and um, you know, in, insulation, uh, the big pink, the you know, the pink stuff, and, um, and I chopped it up. And, I drew on it with like a magic marker and then I carved it out with grass and sandpaper sponges and pieces of sandpaper. Anyway, and then, then I have to um, um, use freckle on it to smooth it out and then sand it again and then I put um, a high angle on it and then I put gesso on it and then I <laughs> Perform an alchemy of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, this original source of you create this We want to invite you to come check it out in person because a relief is like a 2D but sculpture rendering. Um, and so it's actually very textured and layered and they pop off the wall. And so it's very intricate and it's um, it really does look like it looks like it'll be heavier than what it is. It's super lightweight because again, it's styrofoam and, and insulation, and it's supposed to resemble like this ancient uh, tablet that you found in the ruins, and you're discovering the real source, the Black Madonna, the alchemy. Question: um, I'm curious about because you have mentioned like left center. I want to know what's the story with the left first situation and all the things. Which one? All the pictures. I think every, every, all the kids are being nourished from the left. Whereas, unless I'm. Uh, oh, on the left side? Oh, yeah, I was trying to figure out. And that's right. the, there's a story behind that. Oh, the, the left is the. Like in the yin and yang, yang the, the, left, the left is the, the dark, um, the dark and more spiritual side. And the right is the more um, um, practical or. And, Intellectual and and the light side and stuff. So the the left side is, is deeper. Like when you when you see the ancient um, 
image of the of the pharaohs, they they're always stepping into that foot for New York City. So um, yeah, so yeah, that's why it's on that. Because 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 I'm dealing with the I'm not dealing with the the chemical alchemy. I'm dealing with the, the spiritual alchemy. So the baby that be being fed from the from spiritual. Is that also the feminine side? Yeah, yeah, the left is also the feminine. Yeah. So like the in the in the you know in Taoism, you know, you know about Taoism? The, the yin and yang so, so yeah, so um I, I have a piece over there. It, it it's called um the um Dao Dao the Great Mother is the, like the maroon color the maroon piece. And so the um the Dao is described as a a dark mother of all things. And that's that's the same the same way um the black Madonna is described in, in alchemy, you know, as the common material, you know, the, the source of all things. I'm gonna jump back to you, Riley, and and go back to um, is there something that's your favorite image or iconography that you like to um, exude in your work? I know Amar like breasts <laughs> and hips. <laughs> um, is there an icon or a figure or a symbol that's in your work that you like to repeat and use to um, indicate like you have a, a passion, affinity, or obsession, whatever it might be? I don't know about that. Session, but, um, I'm like right now I'm doing, um, and uh, you could go online and see um, my show that was at uh, the University of Louisiana Lafayette. Um, it, it just came down in May, um, but the, I'm using like, the, a lot of the, the gold now in my work, uh, and those are the works I'm kind of like really um, being drawn to. Uh, I'm playing around with the whole idea of the history of portraiture, the the, um, the gold frame, and the because um, at one time the who only people that were having portraits that were you know royal people that had a lot of money, so the whole royal uh, royalty and um, history, of all of that, um, and, and churches that had all the money, uh, so they could get uh, the saints and stuff. Um, uh, uh, painted. So I, I'm really like drawn to that work that I'm doing now because I'm making that uh, connection between that and just normal, normal uh, everyday people. Uh, and in the frames that I'm doing now, you can see I'm playing around with some uh, some interesting stuff in the frames. So that's that's the work that I'm really drawn to right now. That I'm uh, I want to really push that. I want to break the frames up a little bit. I want to, because it's about that, you know, it's about tearing up that whole idea of what, it, yeah, yeah. Of what, what it was, yeah, yeah. That, that elite, elitist um, kind of thinking. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm really like, really um, drawn to right yeah. now. Um, and where I'm teaching right now, we got a laser cutter, so I don't have to cut all my paper by hand or canvas by hand so I can, just put it in a laser cutter and it speed up the process. So I can really like play around with some different stuff and have time and get stuff done um, quicker. So um, I'm liking the new job because of that, because um, I got access to so many other things now. Uh, even the, the silk screens that I used on the drawings, um, everybody know the, the drawing, the, the, when, you, when you go back in, the drawings have like uh, that newspaper kind of look in the background, mm -hmm. and that's that's silk screen and what you put on T-shirts or whatever. That's what most people know. So I'm liking that that the, the having access to those different things. But the laser cutter is my favorite thing right now. My question for you is that I heard you mention earlier about the connection of hip hop and your artwork and being a, a, a lover of hip hop and a fan of hip hop, when I look at your artwork, it's like I'm like looking at the album cover. That's something you think about when you, when you created it, it's like, if this was an album cover, the words would go here and this would happen. Is, is that something you think about? Well, I'm actually, I, that's what I do. I, um, I do I do graphic design for a lot of hip hop album covers I've uh, managed 
some uh, local hip hop artists in Louisiana. Um, so I had to do all of the graphics for that. Um, I do, I work for an urban promotional company in Memphis. Um, so my whole background is graphic design. And I think, um, and, I, and I try to talk, when I talk to my students, I'm always encouraging them to do whatever it is you like to do, make sure it translates into everything that you do. You know, so even in, when I'm painting all the things that I do inside of a computer, which um, Photoshop ain't nothing but uh, a designer thought like, okay, let me mimic what people do inside of a photo lab. And the illustrator is, let me mimic what an illustrator would do at a, at a desk, right? So all of these things are, you, you, you really translating from one to the other. So my whole um, um, experience working, doing, doing um, album covers is just coming to my painting. So, and I've always, even when I was um, as young as I can remember, I've always drawn what was around me. So I grew up in the projects and I always drew what I saw around me in the projects. So, and as we moved, I, my work steady became me, um, just drawing what I see, you know. So the work, that's what my work is. It's, it's about me continuing to uh, understand, uh, understand what's around me through my work, so. So the gallery is um, like a, an additional branch of how artists can make additional monies outside of just producing one thing. They might make smaller items, they might make clothing items. And then it's like an additional retail outlet for them. And what I hear you saying is you're teaching your students to find different branches and ways to um, grow their their right. So if, right, if I'm interested, if I'm let's say um, right now the hot thing is uh, 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 anime. So when my students, when we have freshmen that come in that are interested in drawing cartoons, we have to introduce, we have to meet the students where they are, right? So even if I want to get a student that to come into color theory and do painting, I have to figure out how to meet that student where that student is. So I have to have, have, have to figure out a way to have a conversation and say, yo, you know, this translates into this this way and learn how to use this material to do exactly what you still want to do. And um, I, I, deep, I really, really encourage them to draw, 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 and take, make that translate into the computer too, because a lot of um, students think that um, doing rap design, you just, I, I could just use the computer to do whatever. So, and then when you go into the, the job market, you can only do this thing. But when, as a student, if, you, if when you enter the job market and you can do a lot of things, the basic stuff. Yeah, you can do more things. You have more to offer a company, or or even fall back on for yourself. So, um, yeah, I try to encourage, you know, taking whatever it is you like and translate into all these other things that you can uh, use while you're in um, college. You had some uh, interns assisting you for the completion of this exhibition. How was that process? What, what is your teaching process like? Really, I just tell them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure they do it right. Um, I mean, um, the teach, well, I try to make them familiar with what I'm, I'm trying to do and, and take them through each process. And, and um, I think I think you know basically like when you when you work you know if you work with young artists you have to put drill it into them that the work is going to be your work in the end. So because some of them are you know they're hurt or whatever because like um, they did all of this and that and then you go and you do whatever you do you know and and they they I don't know. They, they, they said they're part of the process, but it's your work in the end. And um, so I have to yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
Because, you know, if you're not <laughs> doing it right, you know. It's your name on the line because it's your product. Right, right. right. So you have to, yeah, you got to make sure you're filling all the holes, you know. <laughs> so, otherwise I can't go on top of it, you know. Like, that's what you hear, filling all the holes. <laughs> How have y'all been maintaining during the pandemic? I can speak, I know Lamar because he's here and more locally, and I know this has been a crazy, actually busy year for him. And we can get back to him, but how has it been maintaining during the pandemic? And uh, in Louisiana, we've been doing a lot of um, cutting trees. And so our pandemic's been a lot, uh, twofold. It's been like dealing with the COVID thing and dealing with the hurricanes and hurricanes that turn into tropical storms as they come further inland because we're we're uh, we're at the north uh top of louisiana which is more north so we get by, by the time the hurricanes come inland they turn into a tropical storm so they're, they're still strong um winds and a lot of rain but it's not the same as you know the water coming directly off of the, the gulf or whatever so that's the, for the most part, that's what we've been kind of dealing with since, um, well, the tornado was um, February, I think February, March, and then the, the hurricane season started in May. So been dealing with a lot of that. Um, my, I, my studio space um, is inside of a, a little shop that we have, that I have, and it's usually to, a lot of things happen, but, our shop used to have like 50 to 100 people coming through it a day. Um, and it was kind of like the source of where I, I get a lot of my ideas for my work. Um, but since uh, some things have happened, um, it's been like less people. So I'm just kind of like isolated in my studio and I can go in and work when I need to. But um, yeah, my, it's been all over the place. When it first hit, I was in a residency and I was in North uh, in upstate New York. Uh, at the Golden Foundation, which is a paint um, paint brand, uh, so I was there when it first started around when it when they first started the quarantine thing. Uh, so I had we, it was I was supposed to be there for four weeks, and it ended three weeks early. But they gave me paint to leave with, which was uh, good. And but it's been interesting. So I I was I was like. Um, I was like, well, I'm gonna stick it out. I'm gonna stay a couple more days. And then they started talking about like shutting down New York, shutting down uh, a couple of other states uh, and Louisiana. So I was like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get back to Louisiana. I'm not gonna be stuck in upstate New York for three or four months. Cause we did, I, at that time, we didn't know how long uh, everything was gonna be shut down or whatever. So I, it's been all over the place to be honest. Um, but I think it's been good to um, really like um, have time away from a lot of people, like because I'm usually around a lot of people, like all the time. So it's, it's it gave me a little time to not be around people uh, and kind of uh, spend time with some work and stuff. And you, Amar, I know he was a Mary Noel Fellow this year. He was also a Milwaukee Art Board, <laughs> Milwaukee Art Board uh, Artist of the Year this year. He's been, been doing murals left and right on top of commissions and then on top of um, preparing for this solo show. How has the year been for you uh, spiritually and otherwise? It's been uh, very busy, but you know, also very difficult. And um, even though I have a lot of work, I also lost a lot of work because I, I, I have usual, well, you know, I have work um, that I, I do at um, Marquette here and um, Marquette University and UWM. I, I lost that work, you know, and um, a lot of the school work I lost. But, um, I mean, uh, you know, like loneliness and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> hard part. I mean, I, it's like, okay, I'm by myself, but I have so much work 
you know, is is I, I have actually I have too much work. I have, like I'm overwhelmed with work. So um, um, you know, um, so it I guess it, it's good to be isolated when you have a lot of work to do, and and I always have something to do. You know, it's it's just whether or not I want to do it. You know, <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's like. You know, it's a choice, but um, um, I mean, it, it's been, I'm, I'm sure it's difficult for all of us, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's been difficult for me also, you know, it's not, you know, it's not a blessing. I don't think it's a blessing at all. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes us, I think it makes us stronger people. Yeah. For Somehow myself, it's... like, I had, you know, everybody had that whole thing. It's 2020. Yeah, it wasn't something 2020 vision. <laughs> yeah, 2020 vision ain't right. But uh, you know, I had all of these things that were supposed to happen this year um, because uh, I spent a year. I spent last year doing two residencies. I was in um, in Colorado at the beginning of 2019, and at the end of 2019, I was in Memphis for three months. I was in in Colorado and then for three months, and then Memphis for three months. And I was spending a lot of that time working on my solo show that's that's at the university. And that our plan was to um, for the show to be up from December to February and then travel to, from from the, to different spaces. And because of the pan pandemic, like, you know, it just kind of shut down a lot of uh, conversations to even, you know, have some things going. So yeah, I you know, it's been like, yeah, it's been like a blessing and a curse, you know, having time to uh, focus on work, but at the same time, having too much time to just be alone. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not a loner at all. Like, like I'm the type of person I can just go somewhere and like not talk to people, but still be around people. And I feel, I feel good. So, um, and, you know, yeah, so I'm, I, we still like, and, 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 you know, especially being from Louisiana, like we just like to, you know, party and hang out and, you know, be with family and stuff like that um, a lot. And this stuff is kind of like, it's really been, that's if y'all seen uh, the governor on TV, he always looked frustrated because we just don't do right. Um, <laughs> but that's a part of who we are as a people. We, you know, we, we have to be around each other and be around family and celebrating together and stuff like that. So it's just been hard, like, in that way, too. Um, yeah. It is, because, like, Mardi Gras and all those cultural, heavy cultural. Everything. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's even, like, things that are not the popular thing mm -hmm. that people know uh, around the world, around the country or whatever, that we also have that's just, like, local and stuff that's not happening. So, and that's driving people crazy. So now they're starting to do like, what's the thing it's called? When they get on the little motorbikes, the little, yeah. and then, but this fight is different because they ride through mud, they're not riding through the street, whatever mm -hmm. it's called. I, I forgot what mud it's called. Mud boogie, mud boogie. No, it's something. It's like on the four wheeler. Yeah, or it's like real country. <laughs> <laughs> they horses and all that stuff, like I'm not into it. But um, yeah, so they they starting to do stuff like that. So it's outdoors and it's got more room and they can still hang out, but they still try to shut them down because it's still too much. I guess that's a product of idleness, right? You find different ways to exert and get your energy out. So I think that's the, that's why it's so hard to reel in because now the energy has to go somewhere and you're trying to contain it mm -hmm. and know on top of what you citizens too. So. Yeah, or right, just being a natural thing to be around each other. That too. I want to get back to who's your favorite rapper? Who who is um your biggest influence, if there is one, or your influences um, with hip hop for your work? Oh, that's hard. Um, see, I'm I'm, I'm kind of different. I listen to like all of them, and I think all of it has something. And it's grounded in something. So like I always, I always use the juvenile, the back to that stuff song. Um, it's it's grounded in like you know black folks having to, um, you know, release 
you know, release stress. Um, so just in, in, in us thinking about party music, you know, it's still grounded in something. But um, people I really like listen to, like to really start thinking about stuff. I love Tali, Kali. Um, I still go back to that Wada Common and Most Def and um, Andre 3000. Um, uh, I, I listen to all the young kids uh, that's out now. Um, NBA Young Boy and Wayne and he ain't young no more. <laughs> Uh, I listen to a lot of it. I listen to all of the stuff because I feel like all of it is grounded in, in something that's 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 um, useful. Like even thinking about like cash money and the whole bling era, it was grounded in this whole idea of um, you know uh, having things that the American dream, you know, the picket white fences and all of that stuff. It was it was it's grounded in stuff like that. So when I when I listen to Hip hop. I'm listening to all these different, you know, forms of it, you know, and I'm I'm picking. I'm under, I'm trying to understand over what what they say. Overstand it, you know, I'm the 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 whole meat of what this music is about and how it's um um in how it's grounded in American culture. So I listen to a lot of a lot of everything. Uh, Rhapsody. I'm I'm loving her right now. Uh, I don't know. I'm listening to a little bit of everything. So, and and and, and like I said, I used to manage some artists. So, um, I try to listen to all the music that come out, just even if I hate it, because um, mm -hmm. you know, like some of the stuff that's for young folks is for young folks, um, and it ain't for me. But I still try to check it out so I can understand what's going on in the music. I hear three thousand people saying he doesn't have a, he he can't think of anything new like that's it for him. Do you ever have a feel? And I'll ask you this too, that you will get like a quote unquote writer's block where you just can't a creativity block where it's like this is it. I I can't think of anything new or novel to produce. I didn't. So I I was at a point when when I graduated from um, Ole Miss. Uh, so when I graduated in 2008 from grad school, I um, I got this big award. I went to this prestigious um, residency, um, and and I got with a gallery that was in the middle of uh, Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all these things was happening for me. Like, you know, I could have been a blue chipper and doing all the big stuff, but I I was burned out from doing grad school. Um, and I think it was good that it happened at that time that I burned out because me being at that time, I probably would have just been trying to like make money and, you know, not being grounded in what the work should be, should have been about. So um, at that time, I, I moved back to Louisiana and um, I was stuck there. So I was, I was stuck there. But I started doing more community work. I started um, the space where my um, my art, my um, my uh, graphic design shop was. It was in the middle of the hood. So all this, I started becoming more. I started understanding more what my work was about. You know, it was about me speaking for those people. You know, people that couldn't necessarily go into certain spaces. And so my work became bigger than just me putting. Um, some art on the wall. It became like me thinking about community, me thinking about how I can come back for another artist, you know, and make sure that artist can come to the table. You know, um, me thinking about um, what me making the work, doing murals, and being making that work accessible, accessible to the community. So it that helped me, like being at that point where I didn't know what I was making or I didn't know. I, I couldn't make work. It kind of helped me to grow forward. Uh, and I think like even those little times anyway are all add up to you making more work anyway. So when you have a down period, when you're not just fully being productive, you're actually uh, probably um, taking in a lot of information, taking in a lot of stuff that's gonna come out of your work later. Yeah. 
you know, fear of driving black creativity. I don't have to really ask that um, issue. Um, sometimes, uh, um, if, if I might get a, a commission, an idea may not come to me right away, and usually it's, it's because of lack of interest, I think. But um, usually um, I get ideas right away, and, um, you know, and I start working on things. But it's, it's, all, it's, it's so much to learn, and so much going on in the world. It's like, it's always, I feel like it's always something else to explore. So, you know, something else you can do with your work and stuff. So even like if I, you know, the work I'm doing today, I may not be um, satisfied with it tomorrow. And I'm like, well, I have to do something else and do something better and do something more interesting. So I, I never really have like an issue with like a lack of creativity or, you know, because I feel like it's always something, you know, like even, even the stuff up that I have up now, it's like I want to take it down and work on it more or something, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Are there any questions from the audience? I know we can probably, I'm trying to encourage people to ask questions. No pressure if you're not as well. We want to make it open. Anyone on Zoom have questions? If not, we're going to um, close it out. I'm going to thank both of the artists of Meyer and writers for coming to speak with us. I want to thank all the attendees in the gallery for coming to um, Raven and coming in with your man and taking in the art in person because video and camera don't do the work justice. Again, like the reliefs that Amara has done and even the, the layering of collage and, and the, the printing um, that's inviting for hopefully the pictures will <laughs> entice you enough to probe more, but um, we still try to encourage people to safely come to do the work in person and also encourage collection of the work because this is again is another revenue stream for artists who too are trying to um, still grow their careers and sustain during the pandemic. But um, we want to thank everyone for their support and their attendance. If you have questions, you can always email the gallery at five points art gallery and studios at gmail.com. We have Facebook and Instagram as well. I can put you in touch with the artist directly if you choose to. The works will be up um, through into the new year. So uh, I believe January 10th of 2021 to give extra time for people to come in during these times. And um, we are as accessible as you would want us to be. So yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. At the shell of Vitus, follow me. Uh, and if you got questions, you can ask me through Instagram. How do you like to communicate? I'm on Instagram, but um, I think I think I'm a Mars on Instagram. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm He's also on Facebook right. <laughs> under his name. That's easier for you too. What don't follow me on Facebook. <laughs> <Don't. laughs> okay. Well, again, thank you, and we're going to close it out, and we encourage you to come to the gallery, and then hopefully some people can come to the two-year anniversary, too, to learn about this process and this progress and the completion and celebrate with us this mile, this mini milestone that we've had. So, again, thank you, and enjoy the rest of the evening.